Good evening. I wrap Steen of Linden Associates with your financial market update, and this is a wrap up actually for Thursday evening, August 13th, 2020, and we're just after 6 30 p.m. Central Time. For those of you that are my paid subscribers, we just sent out the invitation for my webinar. You have to sign up before noon tomorrow to be able to get in free. After that, I open up and send another invite out to the general public, and they will pay, and they do pay to come into these. The webinar is going to be this coming Sunday, 5 p.m. I will open it up probably around 4.30, quarter to 5 for everybody to get into the uh, webinar to be able to write the questions they want me to answer. We're going to cover spiders, ETFs, the futures market. You ask the questions. I'll do my best to answer them. I think you'll find it a lot of fun. It's going to be free flying. And remember, I waited till five because I want the futures market to open. So at least we have some live charts. I can't make the stock market open. That's not my doing. But we, we will be able to work with the futures in the live market and do a lot of talking. Plus, it's going to be an important weekend with different events that are going on. Will there be any other things going? As for my gold report that is still up on my website, it comes off tomorrow at midnight. It only stays up three days. I put it up on Tuesday, so as I understand, it'll be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and get shut off tomorrow. So I think it was maybe Wednesday I put it up. I, I just did it. But they tell me it'll be Friday at midnight. So if you're interested in seeing that, go to www.irapstein.com, uh, and then under research, you'll see the metals report up there. Okay. So. We have a market in stocks that the, the news, all the news headlines, well, we're only three points away, two points away in the S&P from an all-time high close. Look at how this market has made everything up. And the market's not breaking. It's probably a sign that the market does want to make on a Friday a new high close for whatever reason, but it's a good feel, isn't it? And it's a great feel and you have to be happy in one way, at least the stock market for those that have IRAs and 401ks invested, it has made back as a whole a lot of ground. I'm not saying every stock has come back, you know that, that's not how it works, but it's a good feeling. Metals need to consolidate, I think. Uh, this wildness of $1.50, $2 a day silver move, too big. You're going to bring that in and the market will act to you like it's going dead. It's not. It's going to consolidate. I am concerned why copper is so weak. It was down 800, 900 points today. That's eight, nine cents a pound. Why? I, I couldn't find anything other than one report says it's the seasonality of when China stops buying so much copper. The second thing is that out of Chile and Peru, the COVID situation isn't as bad for the miners as was first thought, and they're able to keep their production going. So maybe they're right, maybe a little more supply than the demand calls for it. But copper is what they call Dr. Copper for a reason, and it acted poorly today. As for the foreign currency markets, it still looks to me as though the rally in the dollar that we saw was just that, a rally in the dollar, not a trend change. But let's go to the charts and get a feel for it. In the S&P area chart of just closing prices, you're at 33.74.75. It's a weekly chart. You need to close over 33.81 to be at an all-time high close. You're knocking on the door. I can just hear it now. Every newscaster is going to be talking. Are we going to be able to get a new all-time high close today? That's what they're going to be geared on. You can see how the market keeps gradually coming up. And there's not a tremendous amount of volatility. This is a very orderly rally. And it is a rally, as you can see, that on the whole has continued up till today by making higher highs. So we've had this long string of every day doing that, and it stayed over the 18-day average, which is bullish. The bias is up, and the market had been running the upper Bollinger Band until today. This was the first time, and I'm talking the close of business on Thursday, that it didn't hit the upper Bollinger Band. That's a warning sign. It means that you're losing some of that energy, and the only way you get it back is immediately going for it. So if it's going to do it, it's got to do it now. Otherwise, on its own weight, you could sink back a little bit here. So you've got to be watching that carefully. What about momentum? 
as far as I'm concerned, this is my first thing on a chart I look at. When a market embeds, which means the momentum oscillator, the slow stochastic, is going sideways with both numbers over 80, bullish. And you know, I teach how many days it's got to do that. It's all in my charting course, so that's on our website too, under education. But it's all there. I don't want to go through that right now. And all of this is still very, very friendly in this market, has not changed. In the NASDAQ, we're in a consolidation move. We've got a higher high, a lower low. The market is refusing to even get back under the 18-day average. It hit it, or that zone of it, uh, two days ago twice. You can see this. Here's the market coming down. It got as low as 10,845, right through that average. Next day, the market got to 10,878 again, went through it, came back, and you're fighting your battle right there. Is that what is the trend? We're not blind. We know that the bigger trend on the weekly chart is up. On the daily chart, it's not. The daily chart is in a pattern of what I said, consolidation. It's got a higher high, lower low. You may not feel that way. I do. And it's overbought, not in embedded reading. The other markets took over the embedded reading, like in the Dow and the S&P. They're playing the catch up. Emerging markets coming alive. Why? Some of those markets are looking at what? Price earnings ratio. They're looking at where they're at with COVID versus us. They're saying to themselves, what about all this spending, the US election? Maybe we're better off with those markets. There, there's what we call rotations that go on. People look at those. But you're still very much in a pattern of running the upper Bollinger Band. And here too, you have a pattern. Very similar to the NASDAQ of a lower low and a higher high. What the NASDAQ doesn't have that this does, what takes over the chart? The embedded reading. And as long as I have that embedded reading, the rest of it doesn't matter. It's my number one part that I look at. And in my morning subscriber video, I show you how to come in on the breaks, at least what I think is the way to come in on the breaks that I teach in my charting course and we review it every single morning. In the Russell, you still have the embedded reading. Until it's lost, I am bullish, looking for, on these breaks, the pros to be buying and then kicking out against the Bollinger Band. What about the VIX? I won't change what I told you. On the VIX, I think that the first challenge of the lower Bollinger Band is where the pros have been selling puts. Now, I think they sold it at 2110. They're out right now about, uh, what is that, 21 cents? Not very much, it's 1%, uh, so we'll see what the market does. I think they're looking for 22.92, but to get up there, to get up there for them to be right, you have to break the stock market. You don't break the stock market, this could just drift on them. What else is against them? The embedded reading. It, when I see an embedded reading, and I tell you what a pro is doing, I wouldn't do it. This rules my day. So I watch, I see what they've done in the past, but and in many of those, they had the embedded reading. So not much I can say. Though they, it has been a successful strategy for what I think they've been doing. Will it continue? One time won't make it not a good strategy. In the T-bonds, we have had a higher high, lower low. This is what I term a vertical price break. If you saw the auction results today, they were terrible. The market is demanding that you get a better yield. In other words, if I'm gonna buy these T-bonds, I want a better yield. So when you go into the auction, you're demanding that in order for them to sell what they want, they're giving you that higher yield. So we have fallen back rather markedly in that in terms of the bond price is slipping to give the higher yield. The 10-year note, the same thing. We're now at like a 6.8. We were recently at a 5.3, 5.2 yield up here and it's it's added back quite a bit i do think you're in an area where you're going to grab traction on the downside but you have broken the back of this market for the near term it's got a lot to do if it's going to come alive again in the dollar index in the dollar today's break back under this last break low here of 93.14 confirms what i thought when we had lost the embedded reading 
I look when you lose that embedded reading, you know how important I, I keep talking about it. Then I look for the market to try to make a run to the closest moving average, in this case above it. Well, here's the 45, the 200, the 100, and the 18. It's clearly the 18. That's what I'm looking for. There's even a trade I've come up with it, and I talk about that in my morning subscriber video. Not here. And if the market wants to rally, that's where I think it can go on you, and we'll see where the market uh, goes with that whole thing. But as I'm looking at the market right now, all I'm seeing on it at this point is the resistance was hit, the upside target was hit, and it's now got to reestablish whatever it's going to do. Euro currency, still with higher lows, and I don't know if you're going to get a lower high out of this or what. I'm going to look for the support in this market back at the 117.68 level. If you were to break through 117.19, you break the trend of the market. That would be the negative in the market. So I look for the bulls to try to support it right in that area. In the Japanese yen, you're approaching the 100-day average on the downside and the lower Bollinger Band in an oversold condition. I think the pros are now saying, let's pull in our shorts. You've had a big vertical drop of just shy of uh, 150 points, a little more than that actually. I wouldn't be surprised if they're doing some of that. Bitcoin lost its embedded reading. You lose the reading. I know it's an up day right at this point. I'm looking at the market and I think the smart money is coming out. And I realize it's up. They have to re-embed it. You've had a nice rise and all of a sudden you're drifting right here. That's not to say that I'm bearish on the market. I think they're taking some money off the table and they'll make the market prove it can re-embed the rest of the day. Otherwise, I think they back off. The differential in the energies, as I pointed out, I thought you got bitten to the high spot at three. I think you're too cheap at the two and a quarter. I think you're just going either side of this 18-day uh, moving average of closes of the differential of Brent and WTI. When I look at the charts, I have been adamant, and I don't mind telling you what I've told my paid subscribers, I don't like trading in that sideways action. I find, and I've learned the hard way, you get chopped up. You think it's gonna go, it doesn't. You get taken out of the market. Then you think it's gonna go to the downside, you get taken out. You go through your money in this, and mentally you get nuts, because you're going, I can't catch a winner. Why are you bothering with it? So I tell traders when you see those patterns, that's all I can tell you, I don't know what they're gonna be. It's either gonna be a massive bottom in this market that carries it nicely higher, or we're seeing a top form out of the market. I don't know which. I walk away from it, same in the gasoline here. And when I look at the natural gas, the market's got a pattern of lower highs, lower lows, it's losing its embedded reading intraday. It loses it, getting it back. Very important what it's gonna do right there. I'm Ira. Let me tell you about our seasonal chart play and our metals. You know it's up there on the website. All you need to do is go to www.irapstein.com, go to the words, and the keyword there is going to be research. The metal report is there. It's gonna come off sometime tomorrow. You have a good day. I'll talk to you later.